For all of you cool cats out there, welcome back in once again for this any percent action. This time, Le Petit against Eel. Uh, I'm in the booth right now with Zach the Bog. Zach, how we feeling today? What an intro, Thara. I'm feeling good. This is the first uh, match of the A tournament, which I think is going to be really interesting to see because, um, yeah, especially especially come right off the bat of the D tournament, this is going to be probably a really, really close race. Loads of high-level movement, high-level gameplay, and um, a lot of room for error, too, with, with some of the tricks these runners are going to be doing. So I'm interested to sure. see how this is going to play out. And that's where we, we, we're going to be focusing on different stuff here uh, in, in the A versus the D. The D... Um, you know, we, we, as we just saw, I mean, there's a lot of variation in the A as we get closer to what that, that actual time should be, um, or, or, or that, uh, best theoretical time, they're going to be following very similar routes. Whereas mm. in, in the D they, they were kind of like doing whatever they were most confident with, you know Yeah, I mean? yeah, definitely. Um, but we have both runners in the booth right now. How are you two feeling about uh, kicking off this tournament? What are you, what are your thoughts? How are your nerves doing right now? Um, it's fine for me. I actually thought that I'd be more nervous, but uh, yeah, right now I'm really looking forward. That's to, good. Uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. How about you, Eel? I didn't get, didn't manage to get too much practice in, but hopefully it'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, nervous. obviously, yeah, yeah. Obviously, you've got the PB advantage, so hopefully, uh, it should bounce out a bit. But yeah, I hope this is a pretty close race. So, um, if you two are ready to start, go and ready up in the race room, and we should yeah. be good to go. And while these runners are are getting ready to go, um, uh, just kind of shout out CCG uh, once again. If you're not following, uh, if you'd like, follow, subscribe, check out the YouTube as well. All of these matches go up on YouTube later on. So even if you miss a part of it, you got to go, you know, grab a sandwich, whatever you got to do. Make sure to check out the YouTube, exclamation point YouTube in the chat with that link. And uh, looks like we're just about ready to go here. Yeah, so... I, I, the first thing I noticed is that Eel has got his switch in light mode, which, you know, we hate to see. That's true. <laughs> Blinding that is everybody, everybody on light mode. watching in the dark room. See, I'm I'm a, uh, like, a Dejan hour streamer. I normally stream from, like, 11 p.m. to, like, 3 a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so any of the light mode stuff, like, blinds me instantly. <laughs> like, uh, it, I can't do it. I've, I've been there recently. All right, I believe the, the race time is going. Um, I'm not actually in the room right now, but just waiting for these runners to hit their offsets uh, so that they can time daylight savings time abuse. Yeah, and, and this is where, like I said, we're going to see a closer like routing versus what we saw previously. So it'll be a little bit easier to kind of... Uh, you know, gauge where folks are, what the differences are in the time. I mean, when you start to approach that sub hour, um, uh, I, I call it a mental break, right? Because it really is a mental break. You see it in, in almost every speed game. So Super Mario 64 70 star is also a sub hour. Um, that, that's kind of like the big mental point or the first big mental point. Um, you know, same thing, sub 20 and Super Mario 64 16 star. I, and, and as you get closer to that, that's when you're starting to go for those really high risk, low reward strats. And that's where we can see the mistakes if we're gonna see those mistakes today. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, Sub Iron Super Mario Odyssey is a huge, uh, a huge achievement that people grinded for years, so many hours to get towards. And both these runners have honestly got it over the horizon with just a little bit more practice. So um, as you said before, getting closer and closer to the best theoretical time in this game, there is uh, not much variation and not much room for error at all in these runs. And, and that's why I enjoy Super Mario Odyssey because it is such a young game. You know, uh, things yeah, yeah, yeah. like things are going to still be found. Like we're still finding stuff in Super Mario 64, some of the older games as well. But like the there is a, a the unsung heroes of the SMO community are the guys that sit there and do nothing but like yeah. sit there with math and try to figure out, okay, hold on, wait, this is a little bit better, or oh, you can do this clip, or and and yeah, I love exactly. That. Um, for those of you unaware, there's a there's a Google Sheets in Super Mario Odyssey called the Best Theoretical Time Sheet, the BTT Sheet, and that is being constantly updated every single day as people grind out individual segments of the run, some of them only like three or four seconds long, um, and try and find the 
fastest possible way of doing every tiny bit in the run. And we are always finding new ways, new pieces of movement, new tricks and that sort of thing. And it's really exciting to see this game grow, even being, uh, what, five years old now? Oh, yeah, exactly. And, and and if you're sitting at home right now and you're like, man, this is something I'd be interested in doing, de definitely check out uh, speedrun.com under Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, Odyssey has some of the best resources out of any speed game, um, bar it's none. so easy to get into, yeah. Like, um, it, it's fantastic the, the amount of work that the community puts into helping to teach. Oh, Le Petit actually missing that first shot because of the Goomba. Um, so not going to be frog vectoring here, um, but still a slight lead over eel. Yeah, we're heading into the left side, which is the first uh, proper trick in this oh. run. And Le Petit oh, is oh. missing it. That's annoying. Yeah, um, eel does nail the trick, but she's having to take a slight slow route up coming into the boss fight, but shouldn't be too much of a difference out of Kappa, I don't think. And that's where, you know, Le Petit taking damage from Topper here. Uh, that that honestly is, is where I feel like there's two types of speedrunning. So you have you have speedrunning where you start up your stream and you're practicing and you're going for a PB, right? Yeah. Well, then you have the guys that are just incredibly good at racing. Um, yeah. and it's, <laughs> it's two different mindsets because... In one uh, on the PB side, yeah, you mess up, you can kind of just reset. But on the racing side, you really have to um, be able to to back things up. Like Le Petit, I you know missing that left side there um, really swiftly, uh, finding another way up the tower and um, exactly not really costing him too much. I mean, he ended that cap with a I believe a two twenty three, which is a very very respectable time, even if you got left side. Um, which just goes to show the, the amount of work these runners are putting into the game. Yeah, and you know, the, and, and that was the one thing about Odyssey that I think is more difficult and shows uh, how these runners really dedicate time to practice. Um, there, if I'm not mistaken, there is like a, a practice like hack or ROM out there, but it's not like yeah, there is a practice super one. efficient. Yeah, I mean, the only thing it really does is um, you can set teleport points to warp Mario to and then load certain. Um, kingdoms and that sort of thing and respawn moons but you know it doesn't have like save states, save uh, states. And a lot of the things that, that some games have but um yeah this this game's movement itself is just so fluid and it is uh, it is fun to fun to practice and move around and that uh, it's, it's really good even without a practice mod just to kind of run around the kingdoms fun fact there is a uh, a, a little pharaoh in the background I don't, know, I don't know if you can hear him who has grown up on nothing but mario speed running he's three and uh <laughs> oh my life yeah uh, even before he was born, he had a uh, uh, a Super Mario Odyssey branded diaper bag with his name on it. That is incredible. That really is, yeah. Yeah, we, we got to start him young. Well, absolutely. I mean, like, all jokes aside, a lot of the kind of speedrunning champions in, in this game, a lot of games, are surprisingly young. I mean, we look at Nick, oh, yeah. who is... Uh, I think is he third now? I can't remember if uh, I if um, think Buster so. I'll pull it up. Beat him. I think so. Yeah. I think Buster beat him, but still, he got his first world record when he was 13 years old, and then yeah, which is nice. First 57 in the game when he was around 15, and um, yeah, it's 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 honestly really impressive and a little bit scary when I see these people like five years younger than me doing these just insane feats that I couldn't even think of. And we see that across the board with speedruns. So, you know, I, I started learning Super Mario 64. That game came out in 1996. I was 12 because I'm really yeah. old now. <laughs> but And so seeing guys like Benji is, is a perfect example of one that started out around that same age, 12 or 13, and uh, is now grinding 70 star world record, which is is super hard. Like, like the, uh... yeah, exactly. So, you know, I, I really like that. Um, and, and these guys do a really good job at... at practicing and, and honing it yeah mitch is in third buster's in second yeah i thought so yeah Ooh, which that... is nuts yeah liberty missing uh the roll there which did put him in a slightly weird position he was, he's gonna bonk on the rock he managed to hold back on that dive and save himself See, and I that's where in... that that game knowledge comes in you know yeah yeah exactly it's being able to tell that you know mario isn't gonna make that jump so you need to adjust but yeah i think just some um so some interesting inputs and stuff. You said he wasn't that nervous, but I think there might still be a little bit in the back of his mind that's just causing um, him to miss input a few things. You can tell he wasn't happy by his camera, so hopefully that gets cleared up in the next couple of kingdoms. But yeah, Eel has a relatively sizable lead going into Sand. Um, 
Unfortunately, yeah. it doesn't look like the run is working, so we can't see their exact data on the spreadsheet. And I think that, you know, honestly, um, those nerves coming through with, with racing um, comes from, you know that you can't reset. You know that people yeah. are watching you can't reset, and you have to be the, the backup king. The backup kings are the ones that always win these races. Yeah. Um, and and that's why I think it's really important when learning through the game, you know, go through and learn those beginner strats. Go through and learn those in intermediate strats. Like, we've seen in this tournament, like, crazy stuff, like late clip at, like, a 115. Um, you know, but but knowing those those uh, earlier strats can really help you being able exactly, to back up. Yeah. Because even if you can get late clip at 115, then once you've grinded your PB down to, you know, like kind of a 105, 104, that sort of thing, and then you miss late clip, then you don't have that knowledge backing you up exactly. that a lot of other runners have. Exactly. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, multiple schools of thought there, but it depends on what type of runner you want to be. You know, if you want to be really good at races, that's what I would suggest you do. If you want to just grind out the top level, you know, strats um, for PB, then, you know, exactly. you're not going to do as well in races. It's surprising how much variety we see in the uh, kind of in all, all ranks of runners, even some of the top level runners. Like you can see such a difference in, in gameplay and the way they practice and that sort of thing. Oh, yeah. For example, Buster, who is now in second, has been climbing up the leaderboards, is a, a BTT grinder, and his, his movement is just so fluid and flawless because he, he's yes. just grinded out so many of those bits. Whereas other runners will, will practice grinding uh, all the really difficult tricks and going for that sort of stuff, which saves a lot of time. Yeah, and, and that's where, you know, I, I know I talked about earlier the, the high, high risk, low reward, high risk, high reward um, type movement. I mean, and, and that's grinding out those BTTs really focuses on those high risk low reward because I mean every frame counts eel oh, oh, not having the high up the archway oh that hurts that hurts that does. That... so Lofty has now taken the lead um which is very good news for him good backup there from eel making it back up that's no problem yeah and that's what we talked about I mean you know, where those small bonks are going to result in, in lead changes. Oh, and the, the, the dive there, missing the platform, not able to go for Dram, immediately losing, um, six, I think it's about six or more seconds there to not be able to get that trick. See, now, at, at this point, this is where Lapetite knows that, that he's got a, a slight lead. Um, and, and this is where a lot of runners will actually kind of tone it down a little bit depending exactly. on what Just that lead is be consistent and take that lead um okay. it does potentially look like these runners are synced up now that's because eel is uh doing platform clip in this run because he didn't collect the crate moon so right. potentially quite a bit of time save at the end of the kingdom there um as he's not gonna be going to the oasis like le Petit, but he's gonna be actually clipping out of bounds using moving platform which is really cool because uh, you know a lot of these strats that are being used now were things that people, they theorized that, that it could be done. And so I, I really like seeing um, all of these these strats oh, being instituted. Oh, the exploded. Yeah, I'm going to wait for another one. Unfortunate. But yeah, and platform... that's a couple of seconds as well. Oh, that, that, that's a decent amount of time, yeah. But yeah, Platform Clip was discovered very recently. Um, so to see it already in, you know, not only in runs, but in races where you have to be, you know, a lot more consistent in your PB attempts is really cool. That cycle that... looks like it should work for you there. It should be okay. I don't, I don't know if you saw that ground pound, though. That oh, was... Oh, no! He kept her a bit too late there, so um, unfortunately missed it and having to wait for the next Platform Cycle, which will leave... Le Petit with uh, a good lead out of sand. Oh yeah, for sure. But Getting that's okay. I mean, time. I'll I'll tell you, uh, we have so much of this run left. Uh, you know, another fifty minutes of this run left. Like, you, we're probably going to see lead changes at exactly. least another five or six times, just for those small things. It's those small mistakes. Yeah. Um, that that can end up happening. Uh, Le Petit going to go ahead and be leaving sands. Getting a little stretch in. Yeah, uh, I think that's probably going to be quite a lot of relief right there, considering um, how behind he was at the end of Cascade. Oh, for and sure. It looks like that is uh, about a twenty-five second lead uh, for Le Petit, which is a, which is a really good takeaway into Lake. Oh, for sure. I mean, and and Lake Kingdom, it's one of those that that's really really movement based, but it, it's pretty straightforward. 
Uh, yeah, even like, with late game isn't too much of a, of a problem for a lot of runners, I don't think. Apart from late clip can be annoying at times, but generally it's a bit of a rest between uh, sand and wooded, which can be a lot more daunting. Um, but that doesn't mean this stuff can't go wrong. And hopefully these 25 seconds uh, just give Liberty a bit of leeway in case, you know, he uh, falls down a platform or misses late clip or something. Exactly. And I, I don't know if you heard in, in the last race that we had, so wooded it was one of my big, like, choke points. I guess that was a yeah, huge I think reset a lot of runs like that. And and because I I learned of course with the original small ant tutorials and I'm like there is no way there is no way that that they're doing uh wooded that fast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's weird because wooded is one of those places where you could lose time and not realize you're really losing time but you yeah, are losing a lot time. Of invisible time loss, yeah. And and I think that's what's really frustrating uh Le Petit's getting uh late clip here eel literally nipping at his heels uh gonna be grabbing this moon and attempting late clip for himself as well yeah look at had some uh actually i want to see how this goes no, uh, no commentator's curse here <laughs> all right a few tries to get mario in place but definitely worth it to make sure he, he gets it yeah lifty had a few little um hiccups that start the kingdom so eel did catch up a bit but both runners got a basically perfect late clip all that you can ask for in a race <laughs> Yeah, um, and there are so many little things that can happen, you know, like not grabbing the checkpoint. Um, yeah, that, that, that's that's one of the worst things that can happen. Um, we call that. Uh, oh no, that's that. Never mind. But yeah, that that can um, be pretty detrimental to the kingdom because you spend all the time setting it up and doing the out of bounds, and then you just have to go and do the Rango route anyway. That bonk is, is really <laughs> annoying. Yes, yes, it he is. He frames too early on the Y press there, but uh, just taking the fish and grabbing the moon doesn't cost too much. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a good reaction back up there to, to just so, go yeah. ahead and just cap the uh, just cap the fish and 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 get it in there. Um, it, it seems like I and I, I'm sure people have timed it out um, as to how long each type of bonk um, loses. Yeah. Um, like I don't know why fish bonks just trigger me. I don't. I have no clue why they fish just bonks are out one. I think they were one point two seconds, if I remember that right. But yeah, they, they, they are really just frustrating because um, you can just like very slightly clip a wall and just stop yes. all your momentum. Specifically in in uh, Seaside is, yeah. is where I had that a lot. Yeah, there aren't, there aren't really many walls and stuff in Lake Kingdom. But there we go. Lipity is leaving Lake. Um, that's, a, that's a pretty respectable uh, Lake exit time. Not too far off his PB. And the eel yeah, is I falling mean... closely behind. Not a whole lot of mistakes. I mean, just very minor things. Exactly, know, yeah. Which is what we expect to see. You know, a, a little bonk here. Um, you know, not maintaining speed here. You know, it, it, and that's what we really expect to see in, in you know, the, this division, Division A. Exactly, yeah. And whereas, um, you know, divisions like C and D, we generally see a lot of variation, especially the wooded. This is one of the, the big race deciders in a lot of... Um, lower lower division tournaments because For you know, sure. there are so many different routes so many different paths and, and strats to do and stuff i think these runners are going to be doing probably exactly the same even pieces of movement between moons yeah i would say so as well i mean uh, we we've seen some weird stuff uh, and i don't want to say weird stuff but we've seen you know nut clip it <laughs> um if i'm not mistaken in one of the races the other day with like a 130 uh, we saw a nut clip attempt, uh, which was wow. yeah. which, which was a little little different. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> again, that's where around a one thirty, you're really just starting to kind of get into the meat and potatoes of the game. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely something that I would play around with. I don't know if it's something I would do in a race. No, absolutely. I mean, races are, are taking about you know about taking the um, consistent strats. You know, what's not going to lose you a lot of time, but. Yeah, for those of you who might be unfamiliar with, with some of these uh, near and high level strats, this is called Tree Root, which is um, basically a wooded root that uh, gets this tree moon and then does a nut clip. And it basically means you get enough moons that you can skip the Piranha Plant story moon later on. Le Petit missing the moon, backing up oh. very nicely, not clipping back oh. in bounds. That's there we go, tick. really good backup, yeah. It's so yeah. easy to panic there and fall into deep woods or clip back in, but getting the moon, leaving the nut, it's all okay. And that's where that game knowledge, that that grinding yeah. out the game really comes yeah, into no, play. Knowing that you can jump back down there is um, something that you do have to learn and is worth it. And you're getting it, absolutely no problems.
But yeah, so so they're gonna be skipping the Prawn Plant Story Moon in a bit, which saves uh, a good amount of time because that cutscene is pretty long. And you know, uh, with with looking at the ramp that Eel just did, um, I, I don't want to discount that at all because you know at this level these guys make that look incredibly easy, <laughs> and, and it's not. It takes a lot of practice to to get that ramp. Yeah. Exactly, and and you could even make it up the ramp and then still mess up the movement to get over the rail. Um, which, which we have seen in I think also that was very easy to do. <laughs> yeah, that that strat is really <laughs> scary to look at. But La Petite, uh, like you said, you're gonna be skipping that story moon. Uh, gonna be up. Oh, okay, Ooh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Just uh, jumping back off <laughs> of the uh, the nut there without uh, actually cracking the nut and getting the moon. Oh, eel taking damage. Yeah, and one thing I'm gonna point out about um eel right there is he he didn't get the checkpoint which is a very risky move in a race um a lot of runners even in pb attempts but especially in races will go out of their way to make sure to get that checkpoint because right. if you um if you mess up flower road skip which eel's about to to try and perform or any movement afterwards then um if, if you die you'll just spawn back at the odyssey and it's a, a minute time loss that's a massive time loss for yeah. sure all right, he'll miss the triple jump, but again, has the game knowledge, knows the backup, and goes to the roll ball off the fence, and he's heading up to the crumbling tower. Now, one consequence of skipping the Piranha Plant Story Moon is that the Spear boss fight doesn't activate, so as right. Lapetite's leaving the tower right now, you will notice that he is going to completely ignore the final boss, or the second final boss of the kingdom, and head down towards the Flood Pipeways uh, sub-area. Which is awesome, you know, that that's an, uh, another discovery. It's, it's not as recent as some of the, the newer ones, of course, but it's something that was speculated that you could do, um, but never really done consistently until now, you know, which is really cool. Yeah, I was noticing Killian's reaction to that very, very clean nut break there. That was, that was quite something. But yeah, um, Pipes is a cycle-based sub-area. Ooh, missing the full stun cancel for, for Eel, so Mario is stopping him over there. Yeah, Pipes is a cycle-based sub-area. It requires very uh, precise mechanical movements. Um, can't be too fast, can't be too slow uh, to get past the fuzzies without taking damage. It can be a, a real choke point for a lot of runners. Absolutely, and, and you know, especially when a lot of them are doing, like, um, the, the, the warp strat, I know uh, Chaos, when Cheezo5 was actually learning, he was bet uh, a certain amount of money to be able to get a sub-110 in SMO within a week. So uh, Cheese, the yeah. former world record holder of, of uh, SM64, did it. And uh, Chaos Pringle was actually his coach at the time and uh, was was showing him a warped route. And, and a lot of people were like, were like, ah, no, 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 just go ahead and do the climb, do the climb. But come to find out warp route is way more consistent and can actually save you time yeah yeah warp route is the best um beginner route for uh what it is isn't it yeah and when i started it was no just learn the climb just learn the climb and and that climb it's super satisfying when you get it correctly um but it, it yeah. does take up time and there's a lot of room for error yeah and at the end of the day it's um all that practice and stuff when you could just be just getting the checkpoint and diving straight down exactly going into cloud here uh you know as we're meeting bowser for the first time i, I do want to give another shout out to uh ccg hosting these tournaments going on right now um lots of non-stop mario action you've got uh, the the 70 star randomizer you have this tournament uh you've got the the pro leagues coming up here in this next year um you know if, if it's something that you like uh, make sure to uh, share it with your friends. That's the best thing that you can do. Uh, follow the channel and uh, just be here because uh, Saren does not sleep anymore. So it's pretty much just non-stop yeah, Mario action. Saren puts in a, a stupid <laughs> amount of work into these tournaments. And, um, yeah, he, he's those all support you can get. Also going to shout out the, the runners, Lefty and Eel. Both runners right on the brink of sub hour, which is an amazing accomplishment for any runner. And... Uh, I think they're definitely people you're going to want to be following um, and seeing, you know, how, how much the times drop in the next few months. Agreed. And and I think that, like, in 2022, it's not as overhyped as it was, 
you know, when, when the race for sub hour was on, but I, I think that is like the pinnacle of Super Mario 64 accomplishment is hitting that sub hour goal. Cause it's not easy at all. No, not easy at all. I think Nitro Vita was the first one uh, with the sub hour. If Nitro I'm not, was the first, yeah, yeah. followed by chaos. Uh, I think chaos actually, I might be remembering this wrong, but I'm pretty sure chaos is sub hours. Like, a few hours after Nycros, like it was really, yes. really close. Yeah, it was super close. And, um, you know, at the time, uh, when 1.3 came out, we were actually all at um, at another speedrunning event, a, a live event, and uh, 1.3 dropped out of nowhere, um, which changed the SMO community and pretty much flipped it on its head yeah. at that point. Yeah, well, 1.3 was um, around a 20 second time save, I think. For, it's huge. For doing it was absolutely, absolutely huge. nothing, just because of load times. And it, although it patched out a lot of the uh, tricks that they were doing, um, Sphinx clip, uh, turnip clip. Um, uh, oh, FMS. Yes, first moon skip. That's the one. I was F trying to remember the name of that. Yeah. Um, FMS. The time saves that those had were just dwarfed by the amount of time that was cut off the loading screens in the game. So that's that's really what fired up the runners to uh, actually go and get that sub hour. Which was but, great, because during that event, it was pretty much everybody, Dangers, Chaos, uh, Nitro, literally all of yeah, them just sitting the, in the practice room. <laughs> huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but now sub hour is uh, barely even top 50, I don't think. Um, oh, oh, wow, okay, 54 runners have 54. top uh, sub hour, which is just insane. It is, um, it's nuts. And I, w I would like to say that it's gone easier if we've discovered more tricks, but um, I, I think that's... I think that's a push because, you know, actually performing those tricks and moving exactly. in runs is quite something. Exactly. I mean, look at it like like now. I mean, we, we just went through Lost Kingdom. We barely blinked and uh, and Lost is already done. Why? Because Lost has been that same route has pretty much been the same since, I don't know, for a couple of years now. Yeah, yeah it's um, been there as long as I remember. No, nothing's really changed with that um but those loading times uh with 1.3 really just changed and, and flipped smo on its head and and i think for the better as well uh le petit heading into night metro now gonna be facing the wiggler here soon eel again just nipping at his heels right now yeah eel is, is just um coming into the king for le petit's even gotten the first moon um, I think after a bit of a shaky early game, uh, shaky first couple kings from Liberty, and then shaky early game for Eel, they are they're starting to get their feet on the ground. And you know, I haven't really seen any uh, mistakes at all from these runners in the past few kingdoms. So no, and you know, I know Dangers really pushed it in in uh, Super Mario Odyssey, but uh, the original Blue Bob from Super Mario 64, is, you know, talked about how movement saves minutes. Uh, strat save seconds and that's what yeah. we're seeing right now Le Petit exactly. actually I don't know if he dropped an input there or he I, just I think wasn't so it's something like that so he, he did unfortunately miss that platform cycle which gives Eel a few seconds advantage oh. as he takes damage on the Goomba that is so unfortunate luckily he knows the backup but um that is unfortunate time loss and when he grabs the moon at the top of City Hall he'll be losing, losing even more time due to the damage refill animation exactly I mean I don't know. I, those are those tiny mistakes that we're talking about. Okay. Oh, very nice. Going for Goomba Hack. Um, this trick that is very difficult and saves very little time. But um, definitely paying off the video right now. But when you're on this level too, I mean, you've got... You're fighting for literally every second. So even that... <laughs> exactly. Like, we're falling off in, in, in Division D. You know, you've got plenty of time to make it up. Eel knows that Le Petit is not going to give him a lot of wiggle room. So yeah. that's where we talk about those high risk, you know, low reward. That's the low reward. It's <laughs> that's definitely a perfect example of high high risk, low reward. I mean, if you ask any runner past, probably even past like uh, below, below 105, to just close their eyes, picture one tiny bit of the game, and tell you exactly what buttons they press on the controller in the speedrun, they could. And that, oh, that's for sure. just the level of optimization that literally an hour of gameplay with, you know, upwards of like five, ten inputs a second in some of the busy parts. And you're just mem memorizing every single one. Um, oh, for sure. And, and that's where uh, that's where that consistency, consistency comes from. And, it's, and you see that anywhere. You see that in sports. 
you know, uh, and I compare speed running to like long distance running. Like, you know, so, yeah. where you need to be at a certain lap um, or at a certain section of a cross country run um, so that you can speed up or slow down. Um, I, I don't know how Eel didn't take damage there. He, he shot <laughs> that, that thing so close. <laughs> oh, he took damage there. Yeah. So going to be losing uh, just a little bit more time unless I, I don't think a heart spawned out of any of those. Uh, um, oh, no, there's no damage refill animation in multi moon. Oh, that, that is a, it is a grand moon. moon. Yeah. Or a store or a, a multi moon. A multi moon, moon, as it's called. Yeah. <laughs> You're thinking of a galaxy, aren't you? Yes. Well, we've got Le Petit heading into Day Metro, um, one of my favorite kingdoms casually. Cause I like it, Day Metro, yeah. Like, I don't know. I like the aesthetic. I like that it's kind of like everywhere like the, some of the other stages to me it seems like the game kind of leads you in a direction but metro is just kind of there it is it, it's definitely the most kind of open stage you can do kind of anything you want go anywhere i definitely when i play casually spend the most time just running around in this kingdom and it's got some really cool clips like if you uh, if you want to learn like a, a um a spin pound or a uh, i can't even remember what it's Wrong called concept, but, but... Yeah, the wall, the yeah. roll cancel clip. That's what it is. Um, there's a couple of them that are super easy, and it, and it kind of can help you get with the timing so that when you're doing things like, oh no, Ooh. eel, Sliding missing. straight past the moon, going to line uh. it up again against Scoop uh. the second time. That's not too much. I've seen some very very unfortunate meltdowns. Uh, oh yeah, Scoop clip. Because if you mess up the original setup, then um, it is very hard to to back it up unless you kind of go all the way back, which a lot of the runners don't want to do, but saves time in the end. Now, Le Petit is actually opting out of bullet building, which is a strat that um, you'd see most runners doing at this level. Uh, it saves about two seconds, but it's a decent amount harder. <laughs> yeah, first person so, not treating him well. Yeah, not, not at all. Kind of just uh, jumbling around there for a second. But yeah, I mean, kind of interesting. And, and I don't know if that's for a consistency or why why he would choose that yeah but. so i do um speak flip to quite a bit and i know that I, th I think he does go for it in pv attempts i mean he was talking last night and he said that uh, in the race he's he's not going to try just because um it takes you into the sub area where if, if you mess up some movement then it then you can die and lose you know a good 20 30 seconds so oh yeah um but for eel right now if he does pull it off then he will be saving back uh, a couple seconds on the petite which may not seem like a lot but with the level of optimization these runners have that is going to be worth it and and what is cool about odyssey is it it is very different than a lot of the other 3d mario games however you know one thing remains constant within these games is maintaining mario's forward momentum is super important so even small things like that you may not notice Le Petit when, when transitioning over towards uh, um, the the musicians kind of rubbed the wall a little bit and lost some of that momentum. Those yeah, it's, are... it's, a, it's a very weird game in, in terms of that. Exactly. Um, and, and so those are those time losses that at this level that they're really focusing on. Uh, in Super Mario 64, it's more of like dustless rollouts and, you know, not generating lag from that. But in Odyssey, it's honestly... Keeping that forward momentum, if you have to change direction, uh, you know, you'll end up doing a, a roll cancel um, to try to change direction while you're rolling. But um, we see how that can affect a run uh, exactly, in Division yeah. A. Because um, every time you collect a moon, it does completely cancel all of the Mario's momentum, which is why I'll notice that most of the times when moons are collected, or just about every time, uh, a runner's going to either dive straight away after getting it, or form a spin pound, which means you can instantly roll, which is the fastest way of moving. Um, you know, instead of just falling to the ground and walking away, because it's about kind of getting all that momentum, and then when it gets stopped by the moon, you just need to build it back up as fast as possible. Yeah, and and what another interesting fact about SMO um, versus like SM64. Oh, okay, you'll take in a bonk there on the trash can uh, when you grab the lever. But uh, another thing that's interesting in like Super Mario 64, the side flip is utilized quite a bit. Um, there is uh, not a single side flip in Super Mario. Exactly. Odyssey. Exactly. Um, I, I genuinely don't think there is one. There's a couple which you can use as um, like alternate ways of doing things. So at the top right. of the ramp in Wooded, some people use a side flip there because it's a bit easier. But yeah, I don't think there actually is any apart from some like. I some can't odd think of any either. Yeah. 
Because the getting the height that that you can get from a side flip, you can literally get from just ground pounding and jumping. Um, a, a spin power more specifically, yeah, because I think exactly. the place where a side flip would be utilized is to um, get a big jump out of a dive, but you can just buffer a spin power in a dive and get the same height anyway, so. Exactly. 100%. And going into snow now, I, you know, like I said, I, I, I don't know if you heard last race, I got a lot of flack from okay. the, uh, the, the chief executive officer of, of CCG because um, Snow in particular, I like Snow as a kingdom, yeah. um, but because of trying to grind out um, different types of snow clip, the music just like eats into my brain. It grates into your ears. I I understand that. Um, it, it's yeah. I found it in this game that the kind of at some points the juxtaposition of the music and like how frustrating it is to do what you're doing um, can can really grind on you. Like in Fork's Room and Luncheon, it has that horrible yes. like grilling upbeat music uh, as you know yes. you, you bonk against a wall and like die and completely kill your run, and then the background is just this oh. you know the happiest thing you've ever heard. Yeah, I think was that a down warp on the uh, on the wall, something like that. It's it's what it looked like, or like he didn't. It's almost like he didn't get a wall slide there. It was, oh, it was kind okay. of weird. It just kind of rubbed against it. I see. Exactly. All right. All right. Far too early with that cap throw there, so missing um, moon clip, which is only about a second time save, but. And it's yeah, exactly, and. But but you know, going back into snow, like I enjoy snow as a kingdom because the amount of sub rooms. Um, I think are really, really cool. Um, oh, okay. All right. Le Petit <laughs> going past where the moon was. Uh, but, you know, people enjoy Bound Bowl um, because it can be satisfying and frustrating at the same time. Yeah. Um, we just but... saw a rest side foot from Eel. I'm just going to interrupt you to point that out. Nice. <laughs> I think it was accidental, but it was, we were just talking about it. Yeah, because I, I can't think of anywhere where... Uh, especially in, with the any percent, or I mean, in in any of the major categories where that would actually be used as like the most optimal way of doing something. Yeah. Whereas in SM sixty four, it's it's used quite consistently. Oh, those some some scary rolls and roll yeah. can't stop from bonking on those walls. Um. But yeah, I mean, Eel is, is still very close on the Petit's tail. The uh, gap between them has been about the same since, what did I want to say? Um, yeah, th there hasn't been any massive mistakes here. Um, we did see he, in the last race um, the uh, death of uh, a Goomba, which essentially kills this oh, room. Oh, that's yeah. a terrible thing to happen, yeah. The only way to back up is to dive off the edge it's of the Mario yep. and kill, exactly. you know, kill him. Um, but yeah, I mean, although Le Petit has a lead and has had it for quite a while, uh, I, I think that that is not going to be helping his nerves right now, because if I was in his position, I would be very stressed, because Eel is just on his tail the whole time, and at this level, oh, all sure. it takes is one tiny slip-up, even just one bonk or something somewhere, and, and that lead is closing and closing. Um, exactly. So yeah, exactly. It's, not, it's not a comfortable position to be in. I mean, and, and there's a lot of that high-risk stuff that's coming up here uh, really soon as well. Um, you know, like right now, I mean, these guys are going to make uh, Snowdram look like like it's a beginner strat. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> at this level, Snowdram is rarely even you know something that you break your sweat at having to do. Whereas you know, at the start of the game, it's like. I mean, I remember when I tried to get Soda on the first time, and it was like, so it was such a huge thing for me to get it, and now it's like, if it's I huge. miss it, that's like, even you know, even rarer for me than it used to be getting it. Exactly, and and you know, here, like I said, these guys make it look easy. They're they're about one moon apart. Ooh, you're going you're for that fast a setup setup. list to save a couple seconds, but unfortunately, not quite bouncing on Cappy the way he wanted to. Didn't like that lift off, and and. <laughs> that's much better than falling down. It's much better than <laughs> taking that Significantly risk. better, yeah, but yeah, I mean, obviously he's trying to close that gap right now. Um, I wonder if if he's in a lead, he wouldn't have gone for that because it did end up actually just making the gap bigger. Exactly. Uh, I mean, you know, losing a couple of seconds there, um, not taking the time to set it up, it, that hurt. I mean, yeah. 
going into Seaside, which is my absolute favorite kingdom. No um, way. I love Seaside How? so much. Seaside is Casually. so boring. Casually, Casually I oh. hated Seaside. I mean, I, I like the atmosphere and everything, but trying to that's get all what the I into Seaside was like the worst thing I've ever experienced. Plus, because... to me, I, I like the boss battle too. No, no. I loved no. it. You've never ran darker, I can tell. Have you ever ran darker? I did. I, you I'm did? saying casually, okay. yes. I'm saying okay. casually. <laughs> now, now speed running wise, no, I'd, I'd yeah, agree with okay. you 100%. 100%, I agree with you. Oh, we're taking the bunk that trying to be faster than the meal. But yes, uh, darker and or world peace. Oh my gosh, Le Petit missing the and moon. falling down. That is, uh, yeah, I mean, both runs have made the same mistake, so I think it's actually even out there for Eel, which she'll be happy about. But yeah, we're talking about uh, invisible time save and time loss earlier in the run, and Seaside, despite being, like, without a question, the easiest team uh, in the game has so much invisible time loss that it Bob really does realize. you can do what looks like the exact same thing as like uh, you know apart from like fish dip the exact same thing as you know tyrone or someone also taking the bonk what is yeah. going on with this sub area today so fun fact yeah nobody has gotten it first try really it, in in the first race nobody got it uh, they had to back it up. Now in this race, nobody got it. I mean, Again, it's one of those things where, especially these runners, aren't going to be even thinking about doing. Like it should just be muscle memory. So it's interesting to see them both taking that hit. Exactly. Definitely surprising. Yeah. Back to what I was saying before. I mean, you, you could do be doing the exact same thing as you know Tyrone or something, and still losing like you know like five or more seconds. And it's it's all to do with with lines and that sort of thing. Eel, exactly. Did get fished up there. Pretty new strat, clipping out of bounds, hopefully saving um, five or six seconds there, which will easily make back up the time that he lost bonking. Oh, for sure. And I mean, uh, fish clip, uh, which we see Le Petit doing here, that was another thing that was speculated for the longest time. Like, like we knew that, that you could go out of bounds, but finding a consistent way to be able to do that uh, with that setup that we just saw Le Petit do um you know it, it's so cool to to see that now that's the norm i mean before yeah. you would have to to go down to the bottom go through the cavern grab that moon then grab the sphinx moon the regular way by answering the questions uh, real, that was... real quick trivia question do you know which answer mm -hmm. it is for that sphinx is it c is it the third one no it's the fourth it's the fourth i it's couldn't remember fourth. that's how long it's been <laughs> yeah but yeah, you know, for those that are, again, watching from home, if, if you're looking to get into Super Mario Odyssey, uh, another cool category to, to check out is one uh, that was mentioned during the last wait race, which is talk at 2%. Um, oh, no. And, and the reason why I say this is because then you learn the moons, the names of the moons and That's movement. Um, and, and that way it kind of forces you to focus on movement more than strats. So that when you go to actually start I running, any you're percent, right, yeah. You know. Because since everyone's different, you have to improvise movement every time. Uh, exactly. Which means that you're not, you know, the practice that you're getting isn't just um, from just knowing one piece of movement. Is that it's having to actually learn how to make it up on the spot, which is great for for backing up strats and stuff. You know, in races, in PB attempts. Oh, 100 percent. Instead of just letting the run die, you know, submitting a DNF or just resetting the run, like. Being able to just improvise and come up with something new maybe loses a few seconds, but you're still going, you're still running. Exactly, and and it's the same principle with bingo as well. When when you're you're going for a yeah. particular goal that's outside of like just beating the game, um, it really helps you focus on just moving the character around. Because and a lot of people discount that, but if you look at these guys and and how they're playing the game, they're super efficient for how they get from point A to point B. Like yeah. super efficient. And it's things that you wouldn't really recognize. Um, Yeah, the, the stream slop and everything. We're all right, I think. <laughs> we're, 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 Sorry, we, we, we are didn't, back. We didn't have gameplay for a second there. 
All right. Ooh, Le Petit taking a little uh, Mario booty burn there. I'm so confused by that, yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Ooh, all right. A little bit of a Oh my gosh, what's taking another hit of damage. Wow, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess when you just wait, make one mistake, it's so easy just to spiral, but I think he's back up the track now. Yeah, looking good. Uh, I, I've talked about this before. This movement up here, I, I really enjoyed you know that little climb right there um as a beginner just just learning how to, to is, get yeah it's fun that's I a don't really know why. satisfying piece movement i agree with you that's one of the more satisfying pieces in the game and oh uh eel is going for forkless there which is a really cool strat it's very difficult though unfortunately no, the wall slide isn't connecting and the wall slide on the pillar oh no he, i'm actually very impressed that he um he got all the way up there because Forkless can be pretty, pretty punishing. And then it was very end, which is the kind of easy bit that all went wrong. Oh my gosh. I mean, these guys are like literally neck and neck. Uh, the yeah, difference two moons is, is apart right now. Yep, is that uh, Le Petit has two additional moons uh, over Eel, grabbing that turn of throwing it in. Yeah. Um, Le Petit getting the very, very nice. Um, uh, Podium movement up there. Porch room is is probably one of my favorite and frustrating. <laughs> it's terrible. It's if a lot to of the input. music here. This is what I'm. This is what I'm talking about. Yes. And so I think. Go ahead. Okay, uh, I was gonna go off topic, but um, interestingly just... enough. Eel is doing the camera minute to get the Podibu there, which Lifty isn't yes. doing, which at this level is, um, you know, something that you'd kind of want to be weaving out because, uh, you know, as a beginner, it does save quite a bit of time do turning that camera. But if you can do the movement fast enough, you can get away with not turning the camera there and um, capturing the Podibu a bit earlier. So uh, I'm surprised yeah. about that. I didn't know that at all uh, as well. Um, I knew about the, the camera manipulation to kind of... Yeah. Force yeah, that. You, you have to do some some pretty wacky movement to um, yeah. make that work. But uh, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> the pan bro was like, <laughs> "What is going on right now?" Yeah. In this so much confusion. Box. But there you go. That's that's the uh, that's a good mindset I would like to see from Killio. Just laughing it off instead of getting annoyed at the game. There. A side flip. Yep. The, a side there. flip. That's that's two. That's two. So exciting. I mean, one of them was accidental. I think that was uh, I think that was actually a strat there. Like that. That was pretty cool. Uh, that was that was mind blowing. All you know, right. Having a similar problem there with the with the cheese, slightly better than uh, Little T. It was like the the pan bro just did not want to leave. Like they uncapped <laughs> yeah. like right there next to the switch. Um, I'll tell you as a as a beginner this next moon that we see Le Petit, Le Petit doing. Um, it's terrifying. It is terrifying. It is absolutely uh, terrifying. Less terrifying than the moon itself is what he's about to do right now. This movement. Purple, yes. Diving onto that and diving on that tiny little platform there. There is a, a pretty nice backup. Um, it doesn't lose too much time if you fall down, but it is it has killed quite a few runs for me that in particular. Oh, for sure. And uh, just about as quickly as we started, we're going to be heading out of luncheon. I know, it really flew by. These runners are quite something else. And, and we're 44 minutes in. We've only got uh, three kingdoms left, um, which, which is, is... Oh, oh my! Oh, that's what I was talking about. Let's see. Yes. All right. He knows a backup. You can climb up that wall and just make a backup. That is uh, really unfortunate, though. Yeah. Not a not a great luncheon from Eel. A few bonks, uh, a few mistakes here and there that it can be costing quite a bit of time against the T. I think it's um, pushing closer to forty seconds difference now. It is. We'll see here at the fade out as well. Um, I, I don't know if the stat sheet is currently updating. Um, uh, but unfortunately, it's not. Darn. But yeah, so uh, a forty-four fifty-three exit from the Petite here. I think you're right. I think around 20 seconds is about right um, with the moon dump here. But Le Petit heading on. Again, it, it, it's 95. been this entire race. This entire race is like one unfortunate event after the other. Luckily, Le Petit has been able to maintain his lead 
Um, uh, Eel just making very minor mistakes. There's, there, I haven't seen anything major. You know what I mean? Uh, like exactly, any massive yeah. time um, losses. I mean, we don't really expect to see them uh, very often from the A tournament. Not saying it can't happen, but, you know, Liberty has, has quite a considerable lead on Eel right now. And like you said, there hasn't really been anything that I can personally point out that's gone wrong. It's just been a bonk here, falling down a little bit there. Um, two seconds here, three seconds there, and it adds up and adds up with the this precision that these ones have. And um, here we are. Exactly. And uh, pointing it out to chat, I uh, was asking about a PB difference. If you take a look uh, next to their names, you'll see that Le Petit has a 10047 versus Eel, who has a 10016. So, I mean, these guys are, 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 are pretty evenly matched. Yeah, 31 seconds apart. Um isn't a lot then again at this level it's um it's a bit more than it would be higher up but yeah the, these guys i mean obviously just goes to show like killian despite uh having the you know slow pb is is racing ahead of eel so yeah for sure going through ruins now this is to me is kind of like the a slight rest period like you can't completely discount ruins because I mean, you can make silly mistakes but it, it's a rest period before going into bowser yeah I think. absolutely um th there is only so much time that you can lose in ruined and that's mostly due to the very start of the kingdom if you take a bonk there or something then you lose a couple right. seconds but definitely not not like a, a choke point for these runners and a very good time to remind you guys of the amazing team here at CCG uh, organizing all these races. Um, and check that you follow CCG, because if you haven't, it's definitely worth it, because we have so many cool events coming up. Follow Saren. Uh, Saren does a lot of really good work and deserves all the support he can get. And both these runners as well, as we were talking earlier, um, very soon to be uh, sub-hour contenders and definitely want to keep an eye on in the future. For sure, and, and these prize pools are actually uh, funded by you guys. So um, if, if you like what you see, if, if, if you know, uh, these high profile races, I mean, they've been every single division has been awesome so far. Uh, make sure to, to check out the Match League page as well and uh, help fund that uh, that prize pool. Yeah, the prize pool goes towards the Any% percent League, which is for the, um, I believe it's the 16 best runners from the from this tournament something like that right um but it's like the very top of the top players like the the, the world class gamers um so it'll be going towards funding prize pool for that and finishing up with ruin headed into bowser's now uh right now um going into bowser's if you're in eel's shoes what do you, what are you thinking um yeah so so bowser's is one of the I think it's one of the probably the bit the most interesting kingdom in the game uh, in terms of speed running because there are so many different uh, pieces of it, um, so many different strats and bits of movement and stuff, and a lot a lot of places to, to choke and and kill the run honestly. Um, so Eel is just going to be probably playing as consistent as he can, making sure just to hit every single jump and stuff and not do anything too crazy while probably praying for a, for a significant meltdown for the team. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, and, and it can happen. We we discount mech a lot, um, especially we, we expect to see it in, um, uh, you know, the D League, the C League, where you're seeing more of those, like, mech mistakes. But they do still happen they in the do. A League as it, well. I mean, no player is immune to a missed target quiet, a dropped input, something like that on top of the mech. But, um, you know, the rest of the Kingdom too, I mean, shards can be absolutely brutal. The bunny fights oh, yeah. can be as well, you know, especially if these runners... I know, I know that Le Petit does go for Zar Bomber, I'm not sure about Yield, but, you know, strats like that blind uh not blind jump, bowser dram um mm -hmm. blind jump later on in mech yeah and and the crazy movement and stuff there are just so many places where, where a lot can go wrong in this game but i think it's a really good kind of like climax of the run oh for sure and i mean shards is super satisfying um it and, is, and it, yeah. it's kind of fun to play around with as well like when when i want to warm up i'll normally come into bowser's and play around with shards just making sure that i hit them Oh, that was... He, he tried to poke the bomb and was very yes. confident that he did hit the bomb that he uncaptured the bird. Uh, 
unfortunately had to wait for the next cycle. But there you go. Uh, Lopati is grabbing the final moon in shards as Eel is just grabbing the first couple oh. moon shards himself. Okay, I uh, had a little issue with that second shard there. Uh, had to turn around and, and throw Cappy back to try to grab it. That, that um, roll ball was very nice, though. Fun fact, we were talking about uh, Darker Side when when I was... Uh, you know, I, I ran Darker Side, I'd say, for about four or five months. Yeah. Um, it's just a longer run, and I've got, you know, kids and all that stuff. But, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, one of the things that I would consistently mess up on in, in Darker Side is coming up right now with Le Petit. Uh, after the the Brutals fight here, grabbing that bird and going up to the top, in any percent, you just drop the bird, right? Well, yes, in Darker yeah. Side, you have to keep the bird, and I would... It's very hard to remember. You have to drill it into your mind. Don't kill the bird. Don't kill the bird. Unfortunately, Lupti going for Zarbon there and uh, missing it. I think he just hit the bomb a tiny bit too early, but not a huge time loss. Um, still got that, that, that pretty big lead over Eel. Um, but Eel ha has closed the gap a little bit, I think. I mean, it's hard to tell. I think so um, as well. I mean, right now, um, Eel heading into uh, the Harriet fight just as Le Petit is yeah. wrapping it up. I mean, so we're, we're one bunny fight apart right now and also getting zarbomba saving some seconds yeah i mean they're, they're in the same fight i think since lunch and I, I can't pinpoint any exact points but i think eel has saved a little bit of time on lepati yeah i mean you can really see how fast that strat is it, it oh, does yeah. save it it's still amount of time um oh so yeah it, for sure yeah it only just felt like oh. lepati had finished his fight and now eel is some trouble Lep to talk to that, I think. Yeah, you know, having a chase around the... Uh... Oh, and again! And, and again! <laughs> Two times in a row. A lot of confusion on his face cam. Yeah, that, that is really unfortunate. Just getting the last hit on top of it as Eel enters the fight. Taking damage, though. That's, that's really unfortunate. You know, that's... That's what Eel is counting on right now. Uh, to be able to hope for those mistakes that you'll exactly. having a much better topper fight much much better topper yeah that fight. was really really nice um we talked about damage <laughs> refills earlier happening during moon cutscenes. Uh, i believe it is slightly optimal right now uh to quickly grab the checkpoint this next bunny's fight to refill your health before you grab the moon um and that's, so i'll see what he we does. were asking about that in in the last race um if if it would be faster to grab the checkpoint or it would be fast i don't know how long the load i think if i'm remembering right it is only faster to do it between the two fights not after the fight so oh, like okay. if you take damage on harriet um and you haven't done topper yet then you should grab the checkpoint uh and yeah, probably in d tawny maybe not it maybe it wouldn't be faster but you know like if you've you know got a bit more advanced uh moveset you know do some clean roll cancels and that sort of thing you know, it, it does take exactly. a tiny bit of time Exactly, and, and I could see that because um, again, I don't know exactly how much time loss is depending on how much damage you've taken. It's one point five seconds uh, if you take one really? damage, and then it's a little over two if you take two damage. Oh my gosh! Yeah, right. it, uh, yeah. I, I was gonna say another fun fact when uh, Tippy decided to start running Super Mario sixty four, she. Uh, uh, she had asked that question about taking damage if it loses time in 2.64, and it does not. It does it, it not? Okay. Yeah, it does not in 2.64, but it does it here in uh, Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah. And just one of those extra things that is really annoying, because taking damage in itself, you'll you'll basically always be losing time to whatever happened. Like, if you run into right. an enemy, like, that in itself loses time, and you're also punished again when you get the next game, so it's really annoying. But we're, we're heading into the mech fight now. We uh, didn't really look at it too much with both runners absolutely nailing um the craze boom and blind jump again so oh, yeah. it's not really scary for this level i mean uh in the in the last run uh i think one of the ones did unfortunately die to that blind jump so it can be very brutal when you learn again yes and a very very clean ta for lip -tea. you can see how relieved he is to get that because you know as we said before no runner is immune to those mistakes and it is true you know the nerves are building up while you're literally just sitting doing nothing waiting on the mech for it to stop especially when you know you're going for things like target acquired like yeah when, when you're trying to buffer an input while while trying to like direct like that that's where you really see it oh no Eel oh no stream buffered so we unfortunately didn't actually get to see it but that's exactly what you're talking about i mean 
the setup was um, a, a bit strange because uh, he had to ground pound Harriet in a, in a slightly odd place. But yeah, unfortunately, we didn't see what happened. But falling off the mech there, really unfortunate. Yeah, that, that is huge. That That's not what uh, what you wanted to see here. Um, you know, at this point, uh, Le Petit d just needs to basically put his head down and, and do what he knows. And then he fell again. again. He fell again. He, he, yeah, he, he got very, uh, very eager to kill Topper as fast as he could. And unfortunately, just the, the mech's little movements there threw him off. But Le Petit has got a really good position now. It was so close um, it was. throughout most of this race. He'll always ride on his tail. Not sure what's going to happen next, but... um. Yeah, that's going to be a big, a big breath of relief for Petit as even just a, a solid moon, nothing crazy, nothing fancy, just get through the kingdom and he's, he's secured this race. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's what I mean by, hey, put your head down, <laughs> do what you know, yeah. don't even focus on the other runner, like just, you know, it's just, a, it's a, it's a practice run. It's, it's not, it's not even real. It's just a practice run. You do what you got to do. Uh, but that that was really unfortunate for Eel, uh, falling off not once but twice, having to get back on the mech. That's pretty significant. Yeah, backing um, up target quiet is just as hard as the actual trick itself. It's a really annoying one to mess up. Now, uh, I, I know I've kind of been given a couple of tips for uh, folks that are really, really short on those vectors. Um, oh, that was terrifying. All right, but... you just missed a triple jump. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so uh, if you if you want to learn about like movement in Mario and, and you hear the term vectors a lot and, and it's how uh, Mario is falling at a certain angle to actually increase speed, come play around with it in, in Moon because that's where it's most exaggerated. Um, yeah, and to, and stuff. Exactly. And that, to me, that was the easiest way for me to understand, oh, okay, this is what you mean by frog vectors in... Uh, uh, in cap in the very beginning um because it is so exaggerated in moon that's how you're able to get across that gap yeah. um is is doing the triple and then and then falling it's like a 45 degree angle would you say yeah that, that's certainly what you aim for it's kind of um 10 and 2 on the control stick if you think about it like a clock um and that makes sense it's, it's the, the kind of angles you're aiming for yeah i mean up oh. exactly <laughs> exactly the Sarah, excited like, there you know, it, all jokes aside, like it's one of those invisible time saves um, we've been discussing throughout this run. Like it's uh, it's really hard to see the, the actual like effects of vectoring, but um, then then you compare like you know cap times between someone who does frog vector and someone who doesn't, and it is pretty considerable time save. It is, but Saren also a lot believes. Of probably wouldn't even notice. Uh, Saren also believes the jumps after Fort Room with the Potabo are also. Um... Uh, they also don't exist. They're also a myth. Oh, where, where you go up the, the magma. Yes. Those took me a while to get down. Um, they did. They're, they're very, they are very janky. But once you get them, you get them. Like, it's, exactly, it's... yeah. I don't think I've messed them up in probably a year. All right. Eel trying to catch up here. Pretty, pretty far behind. I mean, almost... A, it looks like it's probably going to be... Just about a full Bowser fight. I think so, yeah. Right Did um, Eel make any mistakes on Moonskip there? I think there might have been. There may have been. I was focusing really on that, <laughs> the the movement for the Bowser fight. So honestly, yeah. I wasn't even paying attention to that. But, um, you know, Eel saving a little bit of time over Le Petit. Le Petit As did said, pause early. <laughs> they are almost synced with those cutscene skips, but unfortunately, it is uh, the start and end of the fight. So yeah, if if Le Petit takes a, a good escape, then um. He absolutely wins. I mean, there's still places to die here. There are. Depending on, you know, what strats uh, are being utilized, um, there, there definitely are places to die. But, and, and I have to say, because again, it's in my contract, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> Saren does have me chained in the booth right now. Uh, we will need some cat jams in chat. We will need some cat jams. Um, Only in the last room, no, no, no preemptive cat jams. Nope, nope, not yet, not yet, Matt. Oh, see, yeah, see. I, <laughs> I thought so. Um, no, Salsam Rose. Yeah. So Eel did unfortunately miss one attempt. He did miss the first step. Nurse Allison Rose keeping the comms in check, <laughs> which is pretty when important. We get too busy talking about other stuff. All right, 2D skip, not a problem. Uh, probably going for the second 2D skip here as well. Yep. 
saves like two frames that trick. Not worth it. And Le Petit buffers. is buffering just a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, Eel working on that. Uh, you know, unfortunately, there's not really any time saves in the Bowser fight itself. It just kinda... Yeah, there's a few um, small manipulations that you might not know about in terms of where you punch Bowser to into the fence that says about 0 0.3 each phase. And that's and about Eel... the extent of it. Eel paused early. I don't know if you I saw know, that. I know. I did see that. It's <laughs> so annoying. But yeah, Kajan's in the chat. Look, he is in the last room. Um, almost definitely secured victory for him. Unless it was really, really wrong. Let, let's, let's hope the commentator's curse is not in effect today. Yeah, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said anything. He did miss the first pillar, so we'll have to be going back back to that in a second. Um, luckily, since he's got such a big lead, it's not too much of an issue. Yeah, not, not too bad. Uh, let's go to back up gonna go kind of far forward i mean to me this the camera changes that are in this pillars room drive me nuts wait okay what is that invisible no. yes it is yes, no it it's is. not no this th that's no Le Petit. are you kidding me it's not real are you I kidding cannot me believe that that is one of the rarest things that can happen in this game oh. is if you swipe with bowser or breathe a fireball uh, I think it's on the same frame or the same couple of frames that that wall goes down at the end. An invisible barrier is put up, so the wall comes down, but the collision doesn't, and you oh actually gosh. can't finish the game. It's happened to uh, Tyrone before in a race, I think, and it is such a rare occurrence. That is absolutely huge for you. Yeah, that that's insane. That like... is insane. That's exactly exactly what Eel is praying for. It's always kind of like when you're losing in a race. That's like the last possible thing that could help you save the race. Oh, I can't believe that. Yeah. This is my fault. No. Yes, 100% your fault. 100% the commentator's it. curse. I can't believe that. That's oh so God. sad. Oh, man. That oh, is... Man. That's Maybe we nuts. can bring the curse back. Uh, this is perfect. Pillars for Eel. He's going to win the race. And he is. And he is. Oh my god, Eel. I'm so sad. That's terrible. That is I mean, so disheartening. Look at you, having the lead out of um, sand. Out of sand. Look at yes. had the lead for this whole race. And then kicked out the tournament for it. That is... Eel finishing up with a 102.55. 1254. One second better than my PB. That is... that That's insane. Lepetit, like that, I'm that is... so sorry. The worst luck that could possibly I'm lost for words. Happen. That's like the honestly the rarest thing that could possibly happen in this game, or like at, at the end of the run. Oh my gosh! I, yeah. I, I mean, he's taking it with a smile. He's taking it in good heart. But, yes. Um, wow. Yeah, because that is uh, Eel moving on to the next round of the tournament, and Lupati is is unfortunately out. Whereas I'm sure he thought he's getting through. What can you do exactly, Lupti? What can exactly. you do? Exactly. Well, congratulations either way. Very good run. Uh, we do have both runners in the booth right now. Um, Lupti is currently deafened though, so. There we go. Le Petit, uh, you, you had the lead the entire time and then just at the <laughs> end there, the invis wall, like, well, I, I gotta know what's going through your head. Yeah. Unlucky, but I'm like, I how are you? Okay, I gotta know how you're staying so calm. I respect you so well, I much. So many people would be raging, throwing the control against the wall. <laughs> yeah. well, I, nah, I mean, that was actually the first time ever that invisible happened to me. Kind of unlucky yeah. that it happens in a race where I'm, I was about Extremely to win. Extremely unlucky. Yeah. I... God, well. Um, I'm not sure if you were listening to the uh, to the comms, but I, no, I, I may have I I'm I may have yeah. caused that because <laughs> I said at the start of pillars that there isn't really anything that could go wrong, and you've secured the victory. Someone in chat uh, said commentator's curse, and here we are, Eel. Well, I don't know. Happy. Eel, you have been. Oh, sorry to cut you off. What you can say? No, nothing. All right, Eel, you you were behind uh, Le Petit since Sand for a good eighty percent of the game. Yeah. And I'm sure that you'd, you know, by Moon, you'd pretty much accepted that uh, that, that that was a loss for you. Like, Dude, 100%. I, yeah. Yeah, I see when I entered Pillars, now I was actually listening to the stream because I had given up already. 
And then okay. I heard, oh no, it was a wall. And I was like, yo, that's crazy. <laughs> like, that yeah. was nuts. That was, that that, was actually nuts. I, I, I'm pretty sure that is the only thing that could happen that, that the would only have changed thing. the outcome. Unless, the outcome you, just, could have saved my, unless yeah, exactly. you just accident, unless Lifty actually just walked off the edge of like, the map. Like, that is the, I, I was saying in the, in the comms booth, like, as a runner, when someone's in Pillar's room, you are just praying for that to happen because it's the only thing that can save it. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, as we're kind of wrapping things up here, I mean, a fantastic race. You know, um, unfortunately, Le Petit, you, you do get knocked out. Uh, yeah. What what shout outs do you have uh, for anybody as we're kind of wrapping things up? Uh, not really much. Um, yeah, I'm happy with the run, to be honest. It was a great run till yeah, the end. It was a fantastic run. run. Mid 101 pace. Played, yeah, both of you played really, really well. Um, fantastic game for both of you. An absolute joy to commentate. Um, and yeah, I, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, that's all I can say. But congratulations, Eel, going through to the next round. And um, uh, shout out to Levity for being a great sport. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm really impressed by your mentality, yeah. But, oh, um, yeah, we have. Uh, do we have any more races today? Let me double check. Yes, we have. We have uh, actually, coming up is. I mean, it's going to be nonstop action till like eight thirty p.m. Eastern. So, uh, next is going to end up being a Super Mario sixty four seventy star seventy star Sherpa showcase. Trevor Star. Trevor Star. Trevor Matt Chills versus Hoon uh, coming up right here on CCG, guys. Again, GGS. Thank you so much. Uh, for those of you that are listening, don't forget to follow. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the YouTube. Check out the Twitter. Sarah posts awesome stuff on there. Uh, but we will see you here shortly for SM64 action. Thanks a lot, GG. Thanks. See you.